So welcome everyone to today's CWN Virtual Open House SNAP Ed. The intention of today's presentation is to attempt to highlight the full scope of work that the Center for Wellness and Nutrition has had in relation to SNAP Ed funded projects. And along the way, hopefully build and or elevate external partnerships towards reaching your programmatic goals. Um, we just be ready that there's gonna be a lot of information provided in today's open house. Don't worry, we, we will, as mentioned earlier, have some optional breakout time at the end so each of you can connect directly with CWN staff on any additional questions that you might have. Next slide, please. So before we really start diving into the information that will be presented on today's open house, just want to give you all a quick summary and breakdown of who we are. Um, we are the Center for Wellness and Nutrition and we are a program of the Public Health Institute. Um, our physical location is Sacramento based, but we work with and provide support to local, state and national partners in developing campaigns, programs and partnerships to promote wellness and equitable practices where they're needed most. Next slide, please. Just a little bit about our mission. Uh, we really do this through our vision, which is a healthy nation where wellness is achievable for all as well as our mission, which is to build capacity and leadership with communities and institutions in order to make that happen. Um, you'll see our pillars that are listed here on the screen, which are education, training, research, research and evaluation, and advocacy. Next slide, please. All right. So, you know, CWN has a diverse staff on board today that brings over 50 years of combined community engagement experience and a wealth of knowledge in the topics that you will see listed here on this screen. Whether coordinating these initiatives on the ground with your target population or coordinating efforts with community partners for program implementation, our team feels confident in supporting programs through webinars and or trainings to support the overall success of your program goals, as well as ongoing continued support to work through some of the largest challenges we face along the way through technical assistance calls. As a national technical assistance provider, our team has had the opportunity to support programs within the state of California, but also across the nation. In doing so, our team has witnessed firsthand innovative programming, which has, had, which has shown success, as well as barriers to success, which we've, we've had the fun and the pleasure of troubleshooting within our current and previously funded projects. So um, thank you all again for joining us. We're excited to uh, engage in this conversation. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to my colleague, Angela Dennis. And next slide, please. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, Jesse. As Jesse stated, I'm Angela Dennis. I'm a program manager here at CWN, Center for Wellness and Nutrition. And I wanna speak to you a little bit today about the education that we create and implement um, innovative and tailored approaches and tools to improve individual family and community wellness here at CWN. Next slide, please. Thank you so much. Now, targeting audiences with tailored messages and materials, that is CWN's bailiwick. This is what we do very well. Our team of experts has a broad array, array of skills and expertise in reaching audiences where they live, work, play, worship, attend meetings, go to doctor appointments, and shop. And we design nutrition education curriculum as well as translate, adapt, and modify existing curriculum. Next slide, please. Now, this is really, really exciting. We work collaboratively with SNAP Ed partners to customize and implement healthy beverage campaigns, which includes promotion and advertisements, uh, promotional materials. Uh, we do this virtually and in person, and we're also able to track uh, partnerships and their campaign reach. This is so exciting because um, among the many, many, many campaigns that we have led, we have uh, two examples examples, one being Rethink Your Drink, and also Hydrate My State. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about Hydrate My State. I'm so excited about this particular campaign. We worked with a state department in Georgia, and the goal or purpose of this campaign was to increase water cons consumption and decrease sugar-sweetened beverages among Georgia residents, residences. 
And so we worked with, uh, like I said, a department, um, a state department and Georgia. And we also were um, able to work with implementing agencies that implemented the SNAP um, education program in their various areas and regions throughout uh, Georgia. And so we were able to um, do a uh, um, work with a focus group uh, to get um, information and feedback from the residents, the local residents and, and uh, about the campaign. And so we asked them about um, our logo. We developed a logo for uh, this particular department. So we asked them about the logo. We asked them about outdoor creatives. We asked about the messages that um, CWN had created and we got really good feedback. And from that feedback, we were able to launch a very exciting um, Hydrate My State campaign uh, last year. And so I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. We have uh, more information in our breakout session if you'd like to learn more about how we worked with uh, the State Department to develop that campaign. Next slide, please. And now I wanna pass it on to my colleague, Catherine. Great, well, thank you, Angela. And, um, and thanks to many of you who've joined us today. Uh, my name is Catherine Hawksworth, and I'm one of the program managers with Center for Wellness and Nutrition. So let me just take a little time to share a little bit about what we do in terms of our training and technical assistance. We at CWN can deliver training and TA that helps to build your capacity and meet your program goals. Our training and TA can be tailored to suit uh, to meet your specific needs, and services can be done in English and Spanish, and can be done also either in person when safe and virtually. Next slide, please. Thank you. We at CWN develop our training and TA catalog that you can see here on the slide, and it can be found on our website. We will share this out with you all in our follow-up email. We offer training and consultation packages to help you set up new and or current initiatives and or interventions. And you can see some of the topics that we have listed here, and of course, you'll be hearing from my colleagues throughout the open house today. Next slide, please. So regarding training, allowing to briefly share a few training topics that we can offer. Starting with the basics, we can do a nutrition, physical activity, and PSE 101. Other topics that we do um, include community, parents, and youth engagement, healthy retail and food access interventions, which you'll hear a little bit more about, school wellness and local school wellness policies, worksite wellness, RX programs specifically related to produce and or parks, partnership and coalition building, and advancing health equity and racial justice, just to name a few. As shared, our trainings can be done in English and Spanish, in person and virtually, and we ensure that our trainings meet your objectives, are interactive and engaging, and geared specifically for the audience, whether the training is for and or done in partnership with youth or adults. We also provide various resources when applicable, such as toolkits and other materials that are useful to support your efforts. Next slide, please. Regarding technical assistance, we offer both group and individual calls. Our TA calls are scheduled to your availability monthly or bi-monthly, meaning every other month, or it could be specific strategy sessions or brainstorming, brainstorming and a resource sharing. Other assistance could be strategic planning, helping you to create a written community action plan, or facilitation such as with coalitions, boards, and or community members, and our facilitation um, on consistent building and power dynamics. We also provide services such as reviewing and providing feedback to and or support in the development of resources. At this time, I'll go ahead and pass it on to my colleague, Jamie. Next slide, please. Thanks, Catherine. My name is Jamie Frederick. I'm our Assistant Director of Research and Evaluation at the Center for Wellness and Nutrition and excited to talk to you about the next pillar of CWN, which is research and evaluation, uh, where we develop and implement innovative pilot projects to identify the best solutions to serve and engage communities. Next slide, please. So a little bit about the work that we do, our research and evaluation team, and we have a, a diverse team of eight staff on our um, end, kind of with expertise ranging from epidemiology to diet, uh, we have dietitians on our team, et cetera, and we support uh, formative process outcome and impact evaluation for and with the community to identify the best solutions to complex problems. 
So some specific technical assistance related to research and evaluation that we provide includes the development of evaluation frameworks and plans, uh, which may include a theory of change, logic model, and analysis plan. We perform bo both rigorous qualitative and quantitative analysis um, to meet different clients' needs. And we have specific expertise in SNAP-Ed specific evaluation align aligned with the SNAP-Ed framework um, and conduct analysis for direct education, uh, policy systems and environmental changes, uh, social marketing partnerships, et cetera. And we also apply a racial equity focused lens to our evaluation, whereby we uh, really promote the use of data disaggregation of data to make sure programs um, direct need or direct resources to where they are needed the most. Next slide, please. Specific work that we have done. Uh, we have ongoing SNAP-Ed evaluation services that we provide for uh, California, Georgia, and North Carolina. We also partner with the Southeast region uh, to do a multi-state evaluation that has been ongoing since 2017, um, which we um, kind of combine the eight states um, to form an evaluation working group and then evaluate specific um, objectives that are um, unique to each specific year and project. This year, we are working on a racial equity project for the SNAP-Ed framework, which is very exciting. We also have evaluation of innovative community-based SNAP-Ed focus projects, including a needs assessment of California indigenous communities, a farmer's market initiative program in California, a community advisory board, whereby SNAP-Ed participants are forming a, a community advisory board in Georgia, and we will evaluate kind of the success of that as well as a health ambassador program. Uh, so our range of services is broad and happy to talk more about that in our breakout room later today. So I'll pass it off to Amy Delicio, our director at CWN. Hello everyone. And as Jamie mentioned, I'm Amy Delicio and I'm the director here at the Center for Wellness and Nutrition. Um, advocacy is one of our pillars. So we do work um, through our organization, the Public Health Institute, as well as with partners to support policies that create healthier communities and increase access to wellness for all here in California and at the national stage. And how that translates in SNAP-Ed is through policy systems and environmental changes. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the work that we have done and how we might be able to support you in ways um, with your PSE changes. Next slide, please. So thinking about healthy community changes, we do use a health equity framework here and we have developed that out to really look at food and nutrition security as well as furthering that around other topics. But areas that we focus on and I know SNAP-Ed is aligned with is increasing nutrition security, increasing fruit and vegetable consumption, decreasing sugar sweetened beverage consumption as well as increasing water consumption, increasing physical activities or opportunities to be physically active, as well as building and maintaining partnerships. Um, as noted with PSDs and SNAP-Ed, we need to build strong alliances and partnerships to continue to think about sustainability and innovation. Next slide, please. So I wanted to talk about the process in which we get PSEs. So of course we do implement PSEs, but we do like to take a participatory approach or ensure that we are engaging or talking with the community prior to selecting our PSEs. Um, we do this with youth and adults, but I do want to highlight a project that we've worked on um, throughout the years um, known as Youth Participatory Action Research Projects. And in this case, um, we work with older youth. We have some um, different levels of what you, my youth might be doing from older elementary up into high school. But looking at those older, older youth are really able to participate in a full project. And that is set up um, through working with an adult ally, ally potentially at a school-based or other youth serving organization. Um, and they work together to identify a critical issue at their school or in their community that is impacting their health. They learn more about healthy behaviors. They investigate this issue. They come to consensus around developing a solution. They work together to present this to decision makers, and then they hope to implement that community and change. Um, we had partnered with Los Angeles County in the past to do an evaluation of their YPAR projects. And um, what we did found also, in addition to some really cool implemented projects that happened, we also found that youth um, gained new skills from being part of this project. 
So you can see below that most of them reported eating healthier, feeling like they can influence changes to be healthier. So getting some of that citizen um, skill, um, they were more physically active and they also felt like they could influence others on the importance of physical activity. So not only did it change their personal behaviors, it also made them more confident in influencing other behaviors and also um, being agents for change. Next slide, please. Another area that we've worked on for a very long time is through healthy retail interventions and other shop interventions as well. Um, but we have worked with corner stores and regional change. We have also worked with large chains in the past that seem to have better luck working with some of the smaller sites, um, as well as more localized chains. Um, we collaborate with partnerships for infrastructure support. So we know you can't purchase infrastructure with SNAPED funds, but we have found ways to incorporate that through other grants. Um, as well as looking at point of sale prompts, environmental changes and physical changes within the store. Also technical assistance to store owners to improve um, access to healthier foods and also highlight and promote those foods along with nutrition education materials like recipe cards. So you see a sample of some of our items. We have produced these in English and Spanish and we also have some of these um, in Hmong. Next slide, please. Um, also thinking about PSE changes, really focusing on nutrition security as USDA has put out their own framework on equity and nutrition security, going beyond just access to food, which I know all of us have been working on for a long time. So thinking of ways of leveraging SNAP-Ed to increase nutrition security, um, produce RX programs and partnering with others to help get that produce in the hands of our recipients, home and community and garden projects, charitable food system PSE changes, whether that's healthy donation policies and or share tables or other strategies to get more produce into the system, um, as well as thinking about leveraging other federal funding such as American Rescue Plan dollars, GUSNIP, or if you're participating um, in SNAP, um, State Nutrition Action Council's ways to leverage the different funding and resources across the USDA funded food and nutrition programs. So um, we have experience doing all of those things. So be happy to talk to you more about that in the breakout sessions. Next slide, please. Also thinking about physical activity, an area that we've been focusing on um, here in California has been park activation and there's different ways to activate parks. Um, we know that in low-income communities, they have less access to green space. And when they do, they often need some more support in order to get more community residents to utilize these parks, whether they are concerned about safety or their equipment isn't safe or there's not enough lighting. Um, so we think about ways to activate those parks in addition to park cleanups, um, partnering with park and recs, PA interventions on site, park RX if you work with healthcare providers to encourage patients and clients to spend more time outdoors in nature um, and potentially community gardens, but if not, maybe something a little easier like edible landscapes um, that are not so structured. So we have experience working on um, making parks more equitable for low-income communities, if that's an interest of yours, um, as well as other physical activity interventions around built environment to increase opportunities um, in communities, as well as schools. Next slide, please, and I will turn it over to my colleague, Mitra, who will discuss some of the resources that we have developed um, that may be useful for you as well. Thank you, Amy. Um, yes, my name is Mitreya Munyan. I'm the Equity and Engagement Program Manager here with CWN. And I'm just gonna spend a minute or two highlighting a small showcase of some of the resources um, our staff have developed over time that support snap -ed programming and interventions. Maybe these are specific resources that relate to your program goals and initiatives, or maybe they're ideas that give you a little bit more of um, a glimpse into the versatility of our expertise. So let's take a look. Next slide. So this is our SNAC toolkit. And as M Amy mentioned a moment ago, SNAC stands for the State Nutrition Action Council. And this toolkit provides an in-depth guide for states establishing cross-programmatic partnerships for implementing initiatives to prevent and reduce obesity. Um, the SNAC toolkit includes recommendations, tools, activities um, for recruiting and retaining partners, selecting an initiative, developing a plan, and then implementing and evaluating that initiative. Um, for more information on this particular resource or how state nutrition action councils can support your SNAP-Ed goals, join the program innovation breakout um, session that you'll hear 
um, a little bit more about this and um, can ask some questions. On the next slide, we can take a look at the community engagement toolkit. And so community engagement is about ensuring that those that are most impacted by the challenges and inequities um, actually have an equal voice in designing and implementing the solutions to those inequities. So our community engagement toolkit is a step-by-step -step guide for public health leaders, community liaisons, and general SNAP-Ed implementers um, to incorporate effective community engagement strategies in their local programming. For more information on this resource specifically, or to learn what engagement strategies we found to be successful with SNAP-Ed, join the community engagement and PSC breakout session. On the next slide, we can take a look at our worksite wellness program resources. Um, worksite wellness programs help employers create a culture for and an environment um, in workplaces that support healthy eating and increased physical activity among workers. Um, our healthy meeting policy resources are an easy templated approach to support and encourage work sites in adopting policies that support the health and well being of their staff. Um, we at CWN lead by example. We've not only adopted this policy for our organization, but we practice and model it regularly with our partners. Um, for more information on our worksite wellness strategies and these templates specifically, you can join our team in the food access breakout session. On the next slide, we'll take a look at some of the kind of food environments, because we know that um, food environments influence um, what people buy and what people eat. And so through a healthy retail program, we um, know that we can work with supermarkets, small grocery stores, and neighborhood markets to um, promote and the purchase of and consumption of healthier foods and beverages. And so this slide highlights a few guides and printed materials on the subject, but we've had years of extensive work supporting both retail and farmers market strategies to make the healthy choice the easy choice in the communities that we serve, including culturally and linguistically appropriate materials um, for the populations we're attempting to reach. Um, so this is just a glimpse into some of the resources that we've developed most recently, but for more information on our retail and farmers market strategies, resources that we have available, you can join the food access breakout session for more information. And on the last slide, um, I'll um, highlight a set of resources um, that just kind of shares a glimpse into some of the culturally adapted materials that we, that aim to meet the needs of Native American populations. Um, these specific resources were developed in partnership with trusted community partners informed by tribal ambassador committee of Native American stakeholders and community members. We believe um, in and support efforts to ensure that educational materials are culturally relevant and linguistically appropriate for the populations that they're attempting to reach. As SNAP-Ed in general has made attempts to um, expand and ensure that they're considering and meeting the needs of Indigenous populations nationally, CWN has relied on allowing trusting and authentic relationships to lead and guide us through that process. Please join me and my colleague in the Native American um, tribal breakout session um, with any questions you have or just to learn more about how we've approached this topic.